podcasting. Okay, great. Okay, so <laughs> say welcome to yeah. Welcome everyone as you join, you could use the chat to introduce yourself. Yes. Good afternoon. We're just waiting for others to join in. Oh, so you could say hi, this is Fumi Lawson from Lagos or from once from the, your school or whatever. Yeah, I can see we've started. Hola to Joshua has said good afternoon, good afternoon. So if you use the chat to introduce yourself, just say hello while we wait for more people to join in. From Ibadan, wow. Thank you very much for joining us. So we've got Mr. Michael Emmanuel from SEF Magodo. Thank you for joining us. Please uh, don't just put the name of the school. Let us also know which area you are joining us from. Thank you very much. We are really delighted to have you here with us. Kindly uh, bear with us. We want more people to join before we start, but we can continue uh, chatting. So please leave your messages on the chat box. And once we start, if you have questions, use the Q&A box at the top right corner of your screen for your questions, questions only. Any other chat, any other thing you want to say, please leave it on the chat box. We'll always read it. So we've got Lakeland School from Abuja. Wow, thank you very much for joining us. We are really, really excited to have you here with us. Thank you. So let's just keep the chat coming in. Okay, Eket, wow, that's good. We have people from Music Company. Oh, nice one, Bright Angel School, Oworo. See you from Eju Shaga, Victory Montessori. That's good. From Agbo, wow. Aboru, we have Lily Spring School, Lagos, Riverside School, Ogun State. Thank you very much, Mr. James Wonkocha. Uh, we are glad to have you here with us. From Abuja, welcome. Thank you very much. Welcome. Please bear with us. In the next three minutes, we are going to start. We just want to give some time for other attendees to join in. Okay. Thank you very much for coming. If you are just joining us, please um, leave your chat in the chat box. Tell us where you are joining us from. Tell us the name of your school and which area you are joining us from. Then, during the course of the presentation, if you have any question, kindly uh, leave your question on the Q&A box, top right-hand corner of your screen. You see Q&A, just click it and leave your questions there. Questions only. Trust me, your questions will be attended to. But for your chats, your greetings, your introduction, please let's use the chat box for that. Thank you very much for joining us. Abiva Children's School, Ms. Ngozi, thank you for joining us. Perfect Preschool, we can see your hand. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we will soon start. Thank you for bearing with us. Uh, I, pro I promise this is going to be a very exciting time, okay? So how are you guys doing? Hope you are doing fine. Hope you are staying safe as much as you can. Hope you are staying indoor. How is um, lockdown in your area? For us here, we are doing great. From Suri Liri, there's no more lockdown. <laughs> okay. 
All right, so we've actually given five minutes already. What do you think? Should we start or should we give more time? We should start. All right, thank you very much. Okay, this is, of course, Edfi Microfinance Bank, the first specialized microfinance bank focused only on financing education, especially for the low and middle class schools, okay? Now, um, I want to introduce our panelists for this wonderful program to you. Um, top on the list is our MD CEO, uh, Edfi Microfinance Bank, in the person of Mrs. Bumi Lawson, uh, she has been in the industry for a long time and she was recently appointed as the independent director of the Credit Bureau of Nigeria. She actually started Action Microfinance Bank as the MDCU over 12 years ago and she has backed over 10 years experience in microfinance and in inclusion finance. So we have Mrs. Bumi Lawson with us. Please wave. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Good, good to, good to be here. Thank yeah, you very much for coming. Yes, good afternoon, Ma. Also, we have from Holistic Business Solutions, SEED, we have Mrs. Olan Rewaju Oni Yeton, the founder of Holistic Business Solution, and she's also the executive director for, and, uh, for the French Social Impact Project, SEED, that's Sustainable Education and Enterprise Development. Uh, I know we have a lot of SEED school in the house, and we all know uh, who Larry is. So um, thank you very much, Larry. Please wave. Yeah. Larry, we're happy to have you here with us. Thank you very much for coming. Okay. Also, we have the CEO of the Equipment All Group Parent Company of Wowbe Interactive Africa First and Only Original Equipment Manufacturer. They manufacture equipment for education. So um, we have here Mr. Bolaho Olayomi uh, joining us today. Thank you very much, Mr. Bolaho. Kindly wave. Uh, for those who have actually used some of their products, you know these are not just um, any other product. They are tailored suits to the kind of environment we have and the kind of uh, available materials we have right here in this country. So Mr. Bolaho, kindly wave to us. Thank you very much for joining. <laughs> You, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Also, we have joining us um, Aishwaya. Aishwaya is actually the head of uh, technology for GEFC. Um, Aishwaya, good to have you here. Kindly wave to us. Thank you, Dio. Thanks. Thanks for having me here. All right. Good to have you here. We are really excited. Aishwaya, please, where are you joining us from? I want you to tell I us am, so, okay. Yes, I'm from Chennai in India. Okay, Ashwaya is joining us all the way from India. Ashwaya, thank you very much for joining us. All right, now that we have seen all the panelists, I remain Dayo Adewale, the host for today. So um, we're going to watch a video uh, to kickstart the program proper. We are going to watch a video. Please. Just remember that you should leave your chat in the chat box, your question in the QA and box as you go on. Thank you very much for coming. Ashwaya, over to you. Nigeria is one of the fastest growing cities in the world today. The city's educational system, like that of the entire country, is struggling to keep pace with the burgeoning population. Over 18,000 private schools have opened to fill this void. Over the last decade, the global number of out-of-school children has continued to decline. But while the world is making a remarkable decrease, 
One in every five of the world's out of school children is in Nigeria. The government has come up with various initiatives to tackle these challenges. Similarly, school leaders, education boards, government agencies, and private sector organizations are also committed to solving this issue. In addition to the various efforts being carried out by key stakeholders, Edfin Microfinance Bank is deliberately making efforts to make an impact in the education sector to enable education for the future. About 13.2 million of the country's children aged 5 to 14 are out of school. The education sector in Nigeria is beset with major challenges such as poor infrastructure, paucity of quality teachers, limited teaching aids, insufficient libraries, laboratories, and computers. These problems continue due to a lack of appropriate funding despite the efforts of the private sector. The continuous rise of Nigerian schooling abroad shows there is more room for improvement. We need to start enabling education for the future by increasing access to finance so that there is increased investment in education to increase access and quality of education for the growing population. Nigeria's youth illiteracy has increased from 5.19 million in 1991 to 9.43 million in 2015, growing at an average annual rate of 24.32%. Edfin Microfinance Bank provides financial services to the education ecosystem. We say that we provide financial services in such a way that it enables the realization of human potential. In Edfin, we believe that if we provide educational support, which is what we call our value-added services, together with financial services, that would lead to improved learning outcomes in schools. Schools will grow faster. They will to recruit more people. They will to provide better learning opportunities and open the minds of our young generation so that they truly can make this country um, great as we expect. As part of the solution to provide adequate funding, the first specialized education microfinance bank is here. Edfin Microfinance Bank enabling education for the future. Wow, thank you very much for that video. Thank you very much for those who are just joining us. Thank you for joining us. This is a webinar on leveraging technology for school resilience by Edfin Microfinance Bank. Please put your school name and where you are joining us from in the chat box. And if you have a question, you can always put it on the right, top right hand corner of your screen. You see Q and A there. Can you put your questions there? Okay. Um, we are going to continue now. As we continue, let's invite Mrs. Bumi Lawson to take us through mitigating COVID-19 impact and getting schools running even during this lockdown. Let's put our hands together as welcome, Mrs. Bumi Lawson. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It is indeed an honor to be here. And um, the interest that we've had in this webinar has really been outstanding. And we welcome you all. So my presentation today, I'm hoping it will be short, but I want it to be as practical as possible. What we're trying to do is to show you how to get your school providing remote learning to, to people during this time of the COVID lockdown. And in fact, also continuing even after the lockdown has been lifted because we do believe that it provides the opportunity, especially for low cost, affordable private schools to continue education so that low income households actually have access to education. We don't want them left behind. We want them to, to be able to continue learning in schools. So, um, Using that, I'm going to just take you through these slides. Oops, okay. So we all know that what has happened with um, um, COVID, the coronavirus, and that has led us to shut down schools since February. I'm sure that most people initially thought that the shutdown would be short, 
and um, but, and I would have opened by now, but we can all see that the numbers are um, continuing to rise. And across the world, schools have been affected. Um, UNESCO estimated estimates that over 1.2 billion, almost 1.3 billion learners have been affected with the lockdown across um, across the world. And in Nigeria in particular, over 40 million school learners have been affected. But we need to ensure that we continue to start Then We've seen some schools already start to provide um, remote learning, some online and so on. But because of scarcity of devices, the high cost of data and so on, it hasn't been evenly spread. So we see this as an opportunity to be able to make sure that we increase the number who have access. Some will still struggle, but we believe that this will enable more schools offer remote learning options to parents. So learning has to continue. We do believe that learning should not stop. If not, even before COVID, our education system, I would say, had some challenges, you know, to put it mildly. And we felt that low-income households are actually left behind. But and now COVID will come in to uh, um, further excavate that um, issue. So, and we don't want that to happen. So, what is remote learning? You see that we've used remote learning and not just online. Remote is people are not in a physical classroom. They are far away, but they are still learning. So, we have various forms, non-internet-based devices, radio, TV, and feature phones. Using radio, we've seen Lagos State, Open State, do quite a bit. Television, schools can key into that. But now the teachers further reinforce that learning on radio because as you look at a radio or television, children are not able to readily ask questions unless there's calling option. But even we know with the calling option, very few children would have the opportunity to call in. So for a radio, you may be reaching a thousand children all maybe even half of those students have questions but they can't so but if you came from your school tell them to listen to radio then teachers can follow up with your students give them assignments based on what topics have also occurred on those radios and then we have of course internet-based devices from smartphones tablets laptops desktops smart tv that can be used for internet and, and based learning just as we are doing today what have we come up with? We've looked at the challenges that schools face. So the first one that has even been more prominent has been the cost of data. How do parents afford the data that children would now use to connect to learn? And so we've, we are currently in talks with um, the telcos. We've seen MTN here. So MTN has a bundled package that we will give to school. I will explain it further as I go through the various elements. So to form a digital school, you need devices, both in the hands of your people, the students, as well as in the hands of the teachers who are teaching. Of course, they may need an internet connection. We do believe that you need internet connection because children have to be able to ask questions. There has to be some form of interaction. Then the learning content, what are they learning? How ready is your content to be put on a digital platform. Even if you are using WhatsApp, is your content ready to be shared on WhatsApp? So that's what we mean by learning content. And of course, school management software, because we feel that schools need to earn income during this time. So they can pay teachers, they can continue to pay their rent, and even pay for all the costs of all the devices, internet, and so on that they have to put in place. So we have a school management system that enables you collect fees, we've talked to digital payment providers so that parents can easily, with USSD transfers, make pay, pay you um, school fees so that they can have access to the learning content. So this, and you can see the partners that we have put together. You have MTN, Rodocase for the devices and learning content. Edfin would, um, provides loans to those who qualify. And Gray Matters Capital, our largest single investor, has created this software, um, the school management platform that all schools can use, and it is a pay as you use. Given all of this, what we have done is to try and see that it is as low as 6,000 Naira per student per month 
Now, some have argued, yes, they can't afford even the 6,000 naira, but we feel that some who currently are not even offering at all would be able to offer the 6,000 naira. And we'll be able to pay the 6,000 naira and um, get learning. So it may not be a 100% solution, but we do feel that it will at least reach 80% and make it more affordable. So what have we done? So for the data, we would take you through various workshops on how to actually use this, um, the, the, the bundles we have come together. So with MCN, we have estimated that students would need three gig per month to be able to access the um, data content. So that we've, um, from MTN, we currently have it at 930 Naira. We are still negotiating for it to go down for that. And we are hoping that they will bring that down. This is an education price. Then for Roducate, the device also, we have actually got, it has, it comes, it is a device that can work offline. So you don't have to connect. The content is already on the phone. The reason why we want the data is to support teachers to be able to teach the content. If not, it means the student is learning it on their own. So yes, there's voice, there's video and so on that the children can learn on their own. But we do know that either parents or teachers need to supervise children for them to be able to continue to, to, to read. Then the school management software. And so the school management system um, it's also a pay-as-you-go, and that is the cost per child, per, um, for per, per, cost per child per month. And so when you add up everything, it comes to 4,429 Naira per month per child. Now, the school too also has to earn an income, so we've allowed for 2,000 Naira per child. So that means that you are able to charge roughly 6,500 6, Naira for you to run an online school. And we advise that you should break it down so that parents can either pay per month. Per month is what we think is ideal, but who knows, you could break it down per week. Some innovative people can even break it down per lesson so that it's even cheaper. Because if you see if it's 6,500, let's round it up and you're looking at four weeks, it's roughly 1,200 Naira per week that it, uh, a parent has to pay. So if, they, if you break it down that way. We've also now done some projections to showcase if you have, have what many students do you have signed on. Note that we actually believe that you should first of all target your current students, but this is not only restricted to your current students. You can expand it to um, across in fact across the world but you know you can expand it so that you even have more students because the more students you have the cheaper uh, it is per student and the more income the school can earn so we've just used that six thousand and multiplied so if you are, have 25 students you can get an average income of 160 thousand and so that will cover so for this 25, we've estimated that you only have one teacher. And that way, you will still be able to pay your teacher 10 to 15,000 Naira a month based on the income as well. So, and, and of course, it starts going up. By the time you even have 5,000 um, students, you are making significant amounts of um, money. You can see for 3,000, it is 19 million Naira. So the key will be how do you market to get and those students. So what we've done is to look at what average schools do, schools we even serve currently charge. We have some schools that charge as low as 5,000 Naira per term. So per term is actually three months. So you know we are now asking for 5,000 Naira per month. So, but we've just used that to compare and see how a school such as that can, can continue to operate. So, We've again looked at very small size schools. So you can look at this table and benchmark where does my school fall? How much school fees do I typically charge? And how many students do I have? Then we've also used an average salary. We've seen some schools pay as low as 7,000 Naira, mostly for part-time 
teachers because you could even decide to run this digital school for shorter hours because the attention span truly i will tell you at home is not the same as if they're in school so it may be two hours a day so you may not be paying the full salary so those are some of the things that you could consider but we've also looked at salary ranges for teachers for seven thousand naira all the way to thirty thousand naira and looking at the number of teachers we've used a rough ratio of one teacher to 25 students and so that gives you the um, number of teachers that will be needed. So like at 5,000, you have 83 teachers. Um, so let me go back to that. So the total teacher salary, if you multiply the average salary times the, um, times the number of teachers will give you how much you are paying. Then we divided it by the number of students you have. So meaning that each child that is paying a school fees, this tells you how much of that school fees is going towards your teacher's salary. And you will notice that the more teachers you have, or more students that you have, sorry, the lower the cost per child is in terms of that. So if um, your admin fees per child, the other costs like rent, um, paying for data and so on and so forth is there, whatever you need to run the school apart from data and devices is there and then the digitalization cost that we had showed before four thousand four hundred. so this gives you a range of what you can now charge so people who are charging five thousand naira who had 25 um students and average school fees they may have to reduce their teacher's salary to this seven thousand naira because they are doing few hours using only one teacher, you can charge 5,700 and you will have, well, that is an average of 25,000 Naira income after you've paid teachers, you've paid um, for the digitization. So that goes towards the school. The same thing for the next one. So that's where you start to see savings. Where they were paying 10,000 Naira is now 6,000, 15, 8,000 and so on and so forth. So. We've just tried to compare what were you charging before to what you can charge with this digitization. Okay. Now, so you will see that the, the larger savings are, is when you start seeing from 200 students to 5,000. So even if you don't have 200 students now, you have to ask yourself, how can I market this online um, program so that more students can sign up and you see that with your charge if you decide to go up to eight thousand you may still remain at five thousand or six thousand five hundred is the average we think you will be able to make um, still an income during this period of lockdown so what we've now said was that how much do you then need to actually start a, a remote school so it depends on the number of students. So the model that we are looking at and that we have discussed with all our partners is that the school acquires all the devices, the data that is needed. So it is not that the parents now have to go and pay for data or go and buy their own device. So you are buying bulk. So let me use the first example. We have an average number of 25 students and one teacher. That means you need 26 devices. So we've calculated the cost of 26 devices and over a nine month period, each month you pay 71,000 Naira. For the SMS using the 499, we multiplied it by the 25 students. So that comes to 12,000 Naira per month and the data cost 24. So monthly, you need to pay out 108. If you compare that, to your income, you will see that you cover it because your income is 142 and you are paying out 408 and so on. Then you will see that the lower, the more students you have, the better the profit um, margin using this estimation. So if you break it down, so what happens is the school, for instance, buys 280 gig of data from MTN. There's a platform that any parent that now pays, you will give them a code for them to access the data and the device. You will give them, you deliver the device to them. So that way, 
it is in the school fee. So you can market it as pay 5,000 Naira a month, get free data and device. Because that 5,000 already covers the cost of the data and the device. So parents aren't expected to now out of pocket again, go and buy data or go and buy it. Already bundled, just like most schools do. You already have, um, when you're sending your school bill, uniform, books, everything is added up. It's the same way we've designed this. Data is added to device and everything. So as you pay the 5,000, you are getting everything. So for data, what we've done is that we've estimated three gig. Three gig is actually conservative. Most people may need more, but the Rodocade device already comes with free data from MTN. So it's only when the teachers want to follow up or do assignments, which you can back up with WhatsApp, that we estimate you would need this data. So three gig has been allowed per student, per teacher. And so the total amount of gig that you need has been estimated. So which roughly comes to 310 Naira per, um, per person in, in, um, the, in the school. And that shows how much you have to pay in data cost. The same thing for the school management system. The school management system, you can actually choose different models. So you have fee collection so that the uh, parents have a way to pay. Um, your school fees, easy methods for them to be able to pay. We've talked to various um, payment platforms. So with USSD, either a card or their banking app, they're able to pay from their home. So you are not handling cash, which are some of the things that can help spread COVID. Then you can even do new admissions on the school management platform. That's why I will take us in more detail on this school management platform. But if you want the entire modules that the school management platform offers, then you will be paying 416 Naira um, per month per child. Come. But if it's only fee collection you want, just, oh, I need, if I want to tell my parents to go and pay school fees, let them use this platform. You will only pay 83 Naira. So you can choose some of the models. Then the learning management system is not yet ready, which is separate from the Rodo case, also cost that. So, We've added everything even just to say, okay, if you are taking the full government of everything, how much would it cost you? So the SMS and the LMS. So school management system is basically the administrative management of schools, which can be done online. So your administrator can, or your boss can be at home and they are looking at this um, platform, who has paid, who has not paid, um, admissions and so on and so forth can be done online. They don't have to come to your school. And the same thing with the learning management content. You can upload your own content, do new lessons to buttress or add or make more robust what you already have bought from the learning content that is there. So the devices too cost 25,800. We've actually upped that a bit to allow for fluctuation in foreign exchange. Because also if you are getting a loan, if you have to take an interest rate loan. So for if, for instance, if you have 25 students, the total cost of the device is 645,000. Then we divided it by nine months. If we have to repay over nine months. So that costs you 71,000 Naira or 72,000 Naira per month. So if you now add up that, what do you need? So let's say you have your own money, you're not taking a loan, you set it up by this device. If you have 25 students, one teacher, your initial start of capital is 754,000 Naira, and you can see all the different prices of this for 5,000. Even if you have 5,000 students, I would not advise that you buy this for all 5,000. Wait and see the demand from your parents before you start ordering device. So you can start as low as from 50 devices, two teachers, and then gradually start growing. So one of the things that Edfree does here is that we are able to then provide you with loans so that um, what we typically ask for is 10 to 20%. If you are existing clients, you only need to pay 10% of this amount. So let's say you are going for the 100, the, the 100, you will pay 300,000, you will deposit actually, it's not even paid, deposit 300,000, and we will give you a loan of the 3 million that allows you to buy all of these devices. So that as parents pay using the platform, yeah, you can then 
repay the loan monthly, which will now be very smaller amounts. And you can see how your income then starts to grow. Again, I want to end up on the income potential that is possible um, with, with this, um, with this, with what we are suggesting. So the average income per month that we estimate that you would be able to get. I know it is not going to be as easy. We need to market um, parents to at least pay 5,000 Naira a month so that their children can um, start school. There are various ways to raise the 5,000 Naira. Some parents will be able to pay. But who knows, we may be able to raise scholarships, things like that, so that um, there may be other organizations who you may talk to that may be able to pay scholarships so that children from low-income home. Only, you can market it as with only 5,000 Naira out of school children are back to school. So things like that. So you, you need to be more innovative in how we get schools running and operating and operating during this time so that learning does not get left and um, does not stop so that children don't get left behind thank you very much thank you very much ma thank you very much for that uh now we know that with only six thousand naira learning can continue both the device the data inside the content and even the school management software everything package and for mm -hmm. just 6,450 Naira. Now, the parents don't need to say, oh, I have to go to work. There's no data for them to use. I have to take my laptop. There's no laptop for them to use at home. Now, with this, every child have their own device. They can't say, oh, I have two children and I have only one laptop. Every child has their own devices and the parents do not even need to be there. It's easy for the children to learn without any support except for the teacher. So this is very good and it comes for only 6,400. And even from that 6,400, the school can still have 2,000 Naira as admin income from it to pay teachers and other admin costs that they need to incur for the remote learning. So I think this is a very good one. Uh, I, I think it's a very good one. All right, before we continue, I just want to ask one question and I need you to leave your answer in the chat section. Uh, from everything you have heard and from the parents of your school, how much do you think that your school, the parents in your school can conveniently pay for remote learning? A, free of charge. B, less than 5,000. C, between 5,000 and 10,000. D, 10,000 to 15,000. E, above 15,000. I will take it again. How much do you think parents in your school can conveniently pay for remote learning? A, free of charge. B, less than 5,000. C, between 5,000 and 10,000. D, between 10,000 Naira and 15,000 Naira. And E, of course. So you can actually vote, okay? Thank you very much. Why that is ongoing, um, for those that have just joined us, please leave your questions in the Q&A box and your chats in the chat section. Uh, we have answered some of the questions, okay? And the video, we are recording this video, it's going to be on YouTube. So, henceforth, you can go to our website, www.edfinmfb.com, and you'll see the video there. You can go on YouTube, go and watch the video there. So, for those who are asking questions about the slide, how do you get the slides and everything, do, don't worry, after the uh, program, it's going to be on YouTube and you can access the whole video on YouTube, okay? All right, so um, we have to continue. Please keep your, keep voting, keep your polls going. Know that we are actually here with you. All right, so um, we are going to the panel discussions. We are going to be asking some of our, our panelists some questions and they are going to answer it. So please, why you are why the poll is going on, please listen attentively. Okay, so we have Mrs. Olani Wajoni Tom from Seed here with us. Um, I just want to ask a first question to you. Um, low income families, they might not have the devices to learn at home, they might be distracted and other things. Um, I do think such family can benefit from learning, especially the non internet based learning. 
how do you think they can benefit from it? Okay, thank you for having me. Um, I must start from the fact that uh, my response would be based on a poll that we ran with our schools. Um, SEED has a network of over 700 local private schools in all the six education districts in Lagos. And uh, since the COVID-19 pandemic, we've been uh, discussing and having conversations with our schools over WhatsApp. And this particular question uh, was one of the things we considered when we were speaking with our schools. Um, a lot of our parents, the truth is that a lot of our parents in our local schools are unable to support their children at the moment with remote learning. And there are different reasons for this. One is that most of the parents do not have any devices. So uh, the phones they even have are not smartphones. So uh, there is no WhatsApp available. Um, and then for those that have uh, smartphones, um, they can't buy data. So they're complaining about data and that they cannot be on WhatsApp. Um, and then the other challenge is that um, since easing of the lockdown, most parents are going away with their phones, so they cannot uh, leave the phones with the children. So um, one of the key things we've seen is that um, the only solution or the easiest solution that would cover uh, a lot of the children right now mm. to ensure that all children are learning is the radio solution from government. Uh, for now, this is what we see that um, would allow the children to actually uh, learn. Um, and there's still constraints with the radio. So we still have issues of uh, poor access to power. So uh, there's no power, they can't get access to TV and radio. But then with radio, they can use um, radios that have batteries and that even when there's no power, they can still get access to uh, some level of education. Um, I think one of the things Mrs. Lawson mentioned, which is one of the other challenges maybe I'll speak about later, is um, the fact that radio is one way. So how do, they, how do we ensure that children are engaged even though they're you know, going through radio school? So... Um, that is one of the key things. Um, we are also looking, or we've come up with a solution as well, as we go forward to ensure that these children are engaged, even as they are um, getting educated via radio. But it is possible, I mean, if we're able to get uh, children to get access to the devices, and we're able to get uh, children to listen to the radio, we would be able to uh, reduce the divide that currently exists. Because I can tell you for a fact that lots of our children are not getting engaged at the moment. And for those that are getting engaged, they're getting engaged um, within, uh, I mean, we're risking their lives, let me put it that way, because the truth is what is happening is a lot of, some teachers uh, are now gathering children in their homes, um, charging 100 naira per day or 50 naira per day to educate these children in their homes, which is against all this uh, social distancing we're talking about with COVID-19. So we've seen in low-income communities, teachers uh, gathering 20 children in a room and you know, taking lessons, which is something we're trying to uh, I mean, ensure that it doesn't happen. Thank you very much for that. Um, I, I'm just, I just want to add this one question again to it. You know, now that a lot of students are now helping their parents, maybe with businesses and uh, other things like that, um, how do we ensure that the parents will not see, will not continue using these children for businesses rather than school, when school finally resumes? Because at the end of the day, they will look at it that, uh, so if I'm making maybe 2,000 Naira from this, my sale of business, and this child joins me, we are making 5,000 Naira. What's the need for education? There's no need to educate the child. Let's just continue making this business and any money. What do you think can be done to ensure that these children are getting education and they go back to school? The, the parents value education. Exactly. And these are part of the challenges that we need to address uh, post-COVID. Um, because one of the key things, uh, and research has showed it from other uh, other. Uh, pandemics that have happened. So if we take a case study of uh, the Ebola crisis in Liberia, um, we had issues where um, some children did not return back to school following the crisis. We had lots of teenage pregnancies uh, following the crisis. 
um, there are different things that come out of uh, having children sitting down at home when um, I'm not doing anything when this kind of crisis are uh, around. So for this, what we need to do is get the children engaged now, get them loving school, get them understanding that they need to continue to learn despite the crisis. Even when the children were in school, they were helping out their parents. So a lot of the low income communities after school, the children go back to uh, support their parents in their businesses. One of the key things we need to do is not, is not to forget every single stakeholder in the education space. So we need to continue to educate our parents. We need to continue to educate communities. We need to continue to educate the children themselves so that they understand the importance of education. We cannot leave the children just in the hands of their parents. We need to educate them to say, yes, they're available now to support you, but they can earn more if they get education let them go back to school, let them, I mean, continue to learn when they're off, I mean, off school during holidays in the evenings, they can still support you, but they need to still stay in school. That is the, you know, the bigger, um, the bigger work we have post COVID to ensure that parents would allow their children to go back to school. We cannot afford as Nigeria, having the largest out of school children in the world to add to those numbers following uh, COVID-19. It's going to be a serious disaster. So we need to, as we're doing all of this remote learning, we also need to have a space to educate parents more, sensitize them on the need for the children to go back to school following this crisis. Thank you very much. Um, a key take away from that is that we cannot neglect any stakeholder. When it comes to educating a child, every stakeholder has to be involved and we cannot neglect any one of them because they all have a, a, a part to play in the child's education. Thank you very much, Larry. Okay, let me quickly ask Mr. Bolan Olayomi um, just one question. Um, what steps, Mr. Bolan, what steps can we take to prepare teachers uh, for the transition into remote learning? You know, this COVID-19, nobody prepared for it, it happened. But in case anything like this happen in the future, so what step can we take now to prepare teachers for remote learning and for such a thing? Mr. Agbalan, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mrs. Dayo, and to the excellent team for having me over today. Um, World Interactive, which I represent, has been, have been, we've been very, very um, forceful in our presentations over the last three years. And I looked very foolish when I kept shouting at every event that I could go for that. Any teacher that could not deliver their content with technology would be obsolete in three years. I've been saying that for quite a while. And now this, this nobody thought COVID-19 was gonna come. Now it's here and suddenly people who cannot ride a bicycle. It's like you getting a new bicycle, you don't know how to ride it. And you suddenly must learn how to ride the bicycle because that's the only way you can go out. So we're having to suddenly upscale teachers to be relevant suddenly and immediately. And that's a lot of work. But what I want to say is the same thing has happened all over the world. And the beautiful part of what we have right now is the fact that teachers can finally have some value in the eyes of society. So I see it as a big, massive opportunity. One, for each teacher to embrace, firstly, to move forward, teacher must individually make up their minds that we're going to embrace this new situation we find ourselves in. That's the first thing. You've got to make up your mind that you're going to get better. You are, going to, you are going to research because learning is a lifelong thing. So what we're trying to now prepare are lifelong learners. And if we want to have lifelong learners, we must have lifelong teachers. The idea yeah. that any kind of teacher, it doesn't matter what level you're playing at as a tutor. Suddenly, with this situation you have, we have, you now have the opportunity to sit on a global platform. And that's a great thing about what Edfin is doing. Edfin is suddenly giving you data. Edfin is suddenly giving you a tablet. Edfin is suddenly giving you content. What are you going to do with all that stuff as a teacher? Your, crea your personal creativity and your, all the things that teachers have first felt frustrated about over time. Suddenly, they have the opportunity in their hands 
to make a case for themselves personally and sell their abilities to the world, I think that's a huge amount of power that's suddenly been put in the hands of our teachers and our tutors. And I'm going to encourage every tutor to begin by grabbing this opportunity that COVID-19 has presented. Take it, scale up yourselves very quickly by grabbing as much information as you can, investing in yourself and in the acquisition of devices that can help you grow. Also, getting, creating your own peer groups as teachers, coming together, whether it's your WhatsApp groups, whether it's new groups that you come together where you can share ideas and knowledge on. And from there, begin to present your creativity and your ability to communicate better. I think this COVID situation has made teachers extremely powerful again, very, very powerful in the eyes of parents and in the eyes of their students. And if they can embrace it, I believe strongly that if they take it on board, invest in themselves, invest in you know, improving themselves, invest personally out of those salary, whatever it is they earn, find a means through which they can work with COVID and, with, uh, sorry, with Edfin and different ways we as device providers or interactive, I mean, um, equipment providers can help them, you know, come together to be able to empower them as long as they are prepared to learn. I think that's the key requirement. I don't want to push too much. But what we need right now are teachers that are ready to learn and embrace new learning models. Thank you very much. Commitment is there. They can move forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Golan. Thank you. Um, Ashwaya, please, the next question is for you. I'm going to be asking you one question. Um, Based on the last poll we did, some schools are unable to start the remote learning. They know they need it. Parents have been asking for it, but they are unable to start because they do not have a means of earning income. I mean, uh, the last time they not even finished and parents didn't complete their school fees before the COVID-19 pandemic and we had to all stay at home. So now that they are complaining that parents want this remote learning, uh, the students are available, but the schools are unable to start this because they do not have the, um, the tools to do that and they do not have the finance to commence it. What do you advise them to do, Ashwaya? What is your advice right now? Ashwaya? Hey, uh, th uh, thank you, Dio. Sorry, my, uh, it was on mute. Uh, uh, I agree these are very difficult times. Um, and schools are going through very difficult periods. Um, we should also understand that uh, some of these schools will uh, continue to, to face problems. Some of the, these will become obsolete. Uh, also, however, there would be a lot of schools who will change their businesses. Uh, they will become stronger. They will not only survive and become competitive we will see a lot of movement of students from schools, one school to another. So uh, it's very important for schools to be ready. Uh, the changes uh, that we see, also the lack of income that a lot of parents face, uh, will make changes in terms of how uh, they are looking at schools. So certain schools uh, will lose some students because the parents are not able to afford the fee. Uh, but uh, they would also find that there are a lot of students who are now keen to join their schools because their parents were earlier sending them to more expensive schools, but they now want to reduce the fee uh, expenditure and are looking for uh, schools like those. Now, uh, as, a, as a school, if you are ready uh, to be present outside, uh, do you, if you make it easier for the parents to be able to know you, reach you, uh, if you make it easier for them to apply for new admissions, I think it would help. Uh, you, you will find that uh, parents find it difficult to pay fee. So a termly fee is difficult, which means the payments will have to be more and more staggered. Uh, as you make it more staggered, you may want to go to a monthly fee or as uh, Mumi was mentioning, you may want to even go to a, a weekly fee. Now, uh, in a uh, a lockdown situation where uh, people cannot freely move, how do you uh, make that possible? 
So uh, if you can make the fee payment process simpler, uh, if you make the collection and reconciliation process simpler, it will ensure you have more visibility on how much money you have got and you, you can collect better. So I think, I think those are things that you have to look at. Um, similarly, uh, you will find that uh, families will be forced to have more members of the family working together, uh, more so because uh, uh, of the situation where uh, you have, uh, uh, they need to work together because uh, they need to earn and, and there are job cuts, et cetera, that they're facing, which means students would, when the schools open, they, they would need to be in school longer. So those who are able to open daycare facilities would gain. Uh, you can expect, even after the schools open, you can expect uh, social distancing to continue. Now, this would mean uh, that um, the governments may require fewer number of students per class for a period of time, which may again require more changes to how you run the schools, whether you are running it in multiple shifts uh, or you are doing uh, alternate day schooling for children. Now, uh, it would mean that those who have online schooling have a better chance to survive and thrive as against those who don't. So, so, so those are the things that I believe you need to look at. Uh, the other key thing that I think is uh, in all of this, uh, it requires a lot of work and pressure on the school owners and administration because uh, they have to run the school even without the school being open in, in, in a lot of situations. So uh, it would help if you are able to digitize your school management tasks. So at least those are handled very well. So, so those are important. Now coming on to online teaching, I, I think it's a, uh, it's, it's a mistake on part of a lot of uh, people to understand that moving on to an online teaching mode is expensive. Actually, it is not. Uh, there are a lot of free solutions which are available. So uh, uh, we are all aware of uh, tools like Zoom, uh, which are freely available for schools to start uh, online synchronous classes so they can do actually online video conferencing classes for no cost. Uh, but beyond that, uh, the teachers should look at and the, and the school owners should look at both synchronous and non-synchronous modes of uh, teaching. And uh, uh, a lot of solutions, whether it is learning management solutions, whether it is content, uh, whether it is assessments, a lot of those are available at uh, low costs or available for free. So utilize that. Uh, the infrastructure and data remain two key problems. And, and uh, with the solution that uh, uh, Edfin has got here, uh, that kind of caters to that very well. Oh, thank you very much, Aishwaya. Thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. Lawson, someone asked a question in the Q&A session, which I think you, uh, uh, is directed to you. Uh, the question is about the content in the device. So the person is asking, what about supervision? Uh, adult supervision, what level of adult supervision is required in the device? Uh, also, we know that uh, since parents will not be able to be available with the children all the time, are ah, this setting of what, uh, which sites these children are opening on these devices. They want to know the safety features and the uh, amount of supervision that will be required to be used on these devices. Mrs. Lawson, please. Thank, thank you very much for that question. I've been looking through a lot of the questions on the Q&A and even in the chat, and that has come up quite a bit. We are going to have a webinar that will take um, schools through the Rodocate device as well as the content so that schools would be able to see that content. But what I want to explain is that that device and the content in it is like having a textbook that has been revised. It's not that it's in text, there are videos and all of that. What I'm trying to explain is that the role of the teacher is still required. We are not um, putting out learning content on a device and expecting a child to just take it and before you know it, the person has graduated their secondary school. No, based on that content, the teacher still, that's why we are saying that teachers too have to have the device. So let's say it is math today, you are doing addition of four digits. The teacher has to know it. The student goes through it on their own time without connection. 
Then there has to be a time using maybe the 40 minute free zone that the teacher calls in, parents, I mean the students sign on, parents with supervisors, they sign on using the device and they can now see, the teacher now takes them through. You are supposed to expect the teachers to still be teachers, be creative in how you are impacting knowledge and add that to them. So that's what supervises the, parent, um, the student. You should give them assignments to that. Okay, they can upload and send through the WhatsApp group for their class. So that if it's addition, you're giving them the assignment, they do the assignment, use the device, take a picture, send it through the WhatsApp, and the teacher can easily see that everyone has done it. So don't, we are not coming up with the device that you just hand to students and everybody goes off to sleep. No way. That's why we are adding teachers. So yes, I've also seen some questions. People say one to 25 is too high for a teacher. We have to be more efficient as we use teachers. So basically that's what we're saying that yes, you may tweak your numbers. You can increase the number of teachers. Maybe that will lead to a slight increase in the fees you will charge your students. But teachers are still important and not removing um, teachers at all. We expect that the teachers must have dedicated time. The child should be go through the content, teachers calling at a particular time, or through the WhatsApp group, follow up to ensure that students have done it. And I know it will be easier for the more um, for more children, say in primary three, four, five secondary school. Secondary school should be easier than primary. Early learning is more difficult. And with early learning, you need the intervention of parents to support them. So some of your content should be how to get teachers to teach their children. There's even um, an IVR solution. IVR is basically where you call into a number and there's a recorded voice telling you or teaching you something. So it's also an area we're exploring to say, can that be used for education? So if you call in, one of the things I've seen that has been done for early childhood is you call in and they tell parents how to teach their children. So one that I called in for was saying, how do we do sorting, which is critical reasoning. So they were telling the parents, take all the vegetables you have in your house, whether it's pepper, tomato, onions, all the different things, mix them up and tell your child to sort it out. That is a class. We've already told the parents what to do. The child does it you know, early in, in early um, learning. And so those are examples. Teachers now need to become more creative. School learners need to become more creative so that we are able to engage still our students, even if they are not in the classroom. We have to get it out of our mind that the only way to teach is in a classroom. It is not. It is, it is it's one of those we are familiar with, is the ones we've seen has been probably successful, but online, we now need to get there. We just have to. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. Um, Mrs. Larry, please, I want to ask you this one question. Someone asked a question. How do you, uh, a, a child that is intellectually disabled, how would that kind of child uh, be able to enjoy remote learning? I mean, that's a key question. Please, Mrs. Larry. Okay. So this is not really my area of, uh, it's not my strong area, but I need, I mean, I would respond to the best of my ability. Um, I have a friend and colleague, her name is Toby. She's more into uh, learning for uh, children with disability. But one thing she has uh, constantly said, and I would reference her, I mean, one of her newsletters, which I got recently, is that you need to be able to educate parents. So a lot of these things, like I mentioned earlier, we need to carry along every single stakeholder. Um, our ability to educate our parents to be able to simulate at least what they get in school at home would help children learn better. So for children with disability, you need to be able to educate the parents to be able to simulate what they do in school with the children at home as well. So if they need um, special tools, they need to be able to get that at home. 
Um, they would be also uh, taught on how to use everyday materials, like Mrs. Buminosin said, um, to be able to achieve some of the things that they are trying to uh, do within the curriculum for the children with disabilities. So um, for me, it is even for children that do not require extra support, we still need to educate parents and we need to teach them how to teach the children at home. And that is where we need to be. That then brings me to the other question which I get asked when I say that, which is, apart from when we watched the video earlier, they talked about literacy levels in Nigeria. Adult literacy is even worse. So we have a lot of parents who do not even understand the curriculum at all. They, don't, they can't even read well. They can't do math. As I'm not very good with math. My children, they're in grade five, and I'm starting to find it difficult to teach them you know, math because it's not my strong point. So it is, I mean, it is about educating parents. It is about the fact that even post-COVID, things like adult literacy needs to be looked at. It's about how we need to ensure that as we're looking at education, we should look at the total picture and be able to educate each and every stakeholder as to how to ensure that children are learning. So for children with disabilities, it is for us to be able to say, you know what, how do we help the parents to simulate all that they need at home and to also get access to the professionals they need? Because even within a school environment for children with disabilities, they have different um, uh, professionals that support the learning of the child. So it is also bringing those remote support to the parent at home so that they can support the children as well as they continue educating them. Yes, thank you very much, Ma. Uh, a lot of us have questions to ask. Uh, we won't be able to take all your questions because our time is far gone. So this is what's going to happen. Please direct all your questions to contact us at edwinmv.com and we will reply all the mails. Please send us a mail with your question to contact us at edwinmv.com. Also, this video will be available on YouTube. You can go to our website. You see it there, www.edwinmv.com. Now, before we go, I want every part, one, each of the panelists to address the school owners on this platform. Um, I'm going to start from Mr. Bolaon. Mr. Bolaon, what do you want to say as a final word to every attendee of this program? Mr. Bolaon, please. Thank you. Thank you very much um, to you and to all the panelists. Something Ashwaya said was hit me intensely. I'm actually shopping for a school for my son at the moment because I'm really not satisfied with what I'm getting. And that's what COVID-19 has done. It's just opened up the underbelly of the whole system. And I can tell you, I can afford, I mean, some of the best that's out there. The whole, there's a complete redesigning of the whole landscape and everything has changed. School owners need to be School owners need to be creative. They need to think on their feet and they need to adopt technology. There's no shortcut to it. I'm also particular about the fact that teachers need to be empowered with technology because they're the ones that are delivering the content. So I'm going to appeal to school owners to redesign and to relook at the key areas of their investment again. I believe we've entered into what I call from a technology perspective, the digital spaces. That's P-H-Y-G-I-T-A-L, digital spaces, which is physical classrooms moving into the virtual space. The two of them come in together. So all the money we take a lot of time to spend to make all our schools, which is what I call makeup money now. You make your makeup, you know, you're already pretty, but you want to make yourself prettier. Swimming pool here, diving board there, tartan track there, you know, all those additional things, school owners need to rethink how they're going to spend, spend their resources and re really focus on the things that are going to be very, very important for the future. Technology is a big part of it. They need to look at that closely, look at the options that um, Edfin is putting in front of them and really, really dig deep into it. And I hope we all get it right and come out better on the other side after COVID-19. Thank you very much, Mr. Golan. Please, how can they contact you? Because someone asked for your email on the Q&A. Someone asked for your email. How can they contact you? I'm sure, I'm sure the Edfin people will pass it on to them. 
I'm sure all right. you can so, permit you to share it with them. That's, that's, the I give you the contact of all the panelists. You will get the contact of all the panelists when you send your questions to contact us at edwinemv.com. Thank you very much, Mr. Golan. Now, um, next will be Aishwaya. Aishwaya, please, um, what do you have to say to all the schools we have as a closing remark today? So, uh, Daya, I think uh, the key things here is that uh, the world has changed and uh, there is no choice. Uh, so it is important to move on to uh, uh, technology-based uh, education. Uh, if you don't, then uh, survival is difficult. If you do, there are a, a whole set of new opportunities. Uh, uh, the opportunities are also immense and uh, it is important to uh, leverage them now. Uh, uh, the other thing uh, I would want to highlight again is that uh, it's not expensive. You have to uh, be willing and you have to put your energies behind it and uh, you will find ways to do things which are uh, possible in, in, in your budget. And uh, if, uh, for example, if, if the devices and internet is, is a challenge, please look at alternatives, look at uh, broadcast media, look at SMS or IVR based solutions, but look at what works best. Uh, still, uh, those who will move to the uh, latest technologies uh, uh, will always have, uh, will always be ahead. So, so it is important to, to make that transition now. Dio, yeah, mute. I'll mute your phone, Dio. Oh, okay. I'm very sorry for that. I do apologize. I'm going to move over to you, Mrs. Landry. Please, as a closing remark, what would you leave with the schools joining us right now? What can you say to them as a closing remark? Okay. Um, thank you all. Um, what I'll say is I'm aware that we have a diverse range of schools uh, attending this webinar. Um, what I would like to say to you is ensure that you're doing what works for your students. Uh, because um, everyone is talking about devices and tablets, if you do an evaluation of your parents and nobody can use a device and nobody, I mean, it's not, uh, they can't afford it, then there's no need for you uh, purchasing devices if it is not uh, something that can be accessed by your own uh, parents. However, you still need to ensure that every child has the opportunity to learn. So if it is that um, the radio solution is what you're going to offer to your parents, please ensure that you communicate that to them and that you can give every child an opportunity to learn at this time. One of the key things or the major thing uh, I would like to leave with you is that whatever solution you decide to use, make sure that you use this model to evaluate it. I call it the tree model as in a tree, T-R-E-E. -E. So will that model allow you to teach, T for teach? Will that model allow you to reach the children themselves? Will that model allow you to engage the child? So for radio, there is a challenge with engagement how would you add engagement to whatever you're trying to do so is it that your teacher will call the children after to clarify if they have questions or there'll be a model for the children to ask questions even after a radio program and then the final one is evaluate are the children learning is it that every month or every week a little test will be done maybe via whatsapp and then they send their um test results back I mean, they send their uh, paper back and you can evaluate because one of the key challenges are is that we're pushing out a lot of things, but we're not evaluating whether our children are learning despite the fact that it is being done remotely. So if you have the three model in mind, that is teach, reach, engage, and evaluate, I'm sure that whatever you decide to do, the child will be learning despite whatever model you decide to adopt in your school. Thank you. Dio, you're on mute again. Thank you. Engage and evaluate.
that is a key one. Thank you very much. We really appreciate this. Um, now to Mrs. Bumi Lawson, please, what are you going to say to them as a take home from this program? Because they, they, the questions are, there are a lot of questions, but we will answer all the questions once they send their mail to contact us at fnmv.com. Please be ready as well. All your questions will be attended to. So, but for now, let's listen to Mrs. Bumi Lawson for a closing remark. Yeah, thank you very much. I was trying to answer as many questions as I can, I'm typing it. So please, if you've asked a question on the chat, go through the question and answer. You may find an answer specifically to your question because they are just so wide and varied. If I was going to address all those questions, we will have to start another webinar for another hour. So, but it shows keen interest. That's one thing that I truly appreciate about this. There's something that I, the, the key message I want to parents and educators and everyone that is on this um, webinar to take away is that we cannot give up. We have to change. Times are changing, we are innovative. Some of the questions are around that if we start this remote learning, when we now start school, Parents will not want to send their children back to school. It is an interesting question to me because some people are even saying, ah, we shouldn't even do remote. But now I think people are seeing that parents may even enjoy the remote school because some people have even lost their jobs. Someone was asking, how, what about parents that are not available like bankers? Bankers are losing their jobs like no man business. They probably can no longer afford all those expensive schools. They now have more time on their hand. Who says they may not choose remote schools, uh, remote learning options than going physically to school, especially because some parents will still be scared about COVID, not even because they prefer remote, but as they are still unsure, if I take my child to school, I'll drop her there. How do I know they don't have COVID? Let her be learning at home and are willing to pay. It is the owners of the school to search out for those kind of parents. But the key issue, I think, is Ashraya who said it. Teachers, school owners need to become innovative. It is no longer business as usual. There are two school of thought. Don't expect that, oh, COVID is over, school resume, back to normal. It is not going to happen. What I answered one person who was asking about that was, a school needs to do both. You need to be able to do remote learning as well as in class post-COVID. You have to do both. In fact, as they finish in class, support it with your remote learning. Weekends, in fact, so it, I feel it opens so much opportunity because not only as a school can you be doing classes during the day if you have, they are now back, in the evening you can do your remote learning for adult education. You can do um, hobbies. People want to learn cooking. Who want to learn even how to teach. Teach your teachers. Weekends, you can do English writing skills, how to write. You are earning income from all sorts of levels. Schooling cannot be as usual. Let's open our mind now to the possibilities. The other thing I also want to just leave is please go to our website. There are so many resources there. You will also continue to see information about subsequent webinars that we are going to do because a lot of the questions to center around the devices, center around the devices. What device, how much is it, how does it work? We are going to have a webinar that takes you through the device. So we will show the device, um, for it, it covers the entire Nigerian curriculum from nursery to SS3, different subjects so, and everything. We will take you through it. This device that, um, can also have internet, you can use it to browse the net, but it's also blocked for some, um, for some um, websites so that it actually has parental control, the safety of the child and so on and so forth. So there's going to be a separate webinar on um, the, the device issue. There's going to be a separate webinar on even the data. How are you now going to share out the data to parents? Note that what I feel is unique about this is that parents can't say, I don't have food, I don't have data, because the school has added it as part of what they are giving to. Think about your typical school. You are, the student, parents don't manufacture books, so it is the school that gives them books, gives them uniform, gives them 
all those things. That's what we are saying schools should continue to do now. So, the key message, schools are not remaining the same. We need to be more creative about education. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Lawson, for that. Uh, thank you very much for all our participants, all our uh, panelists too. We really, really are grateful to have you here with us. Um, and for everyone who have taken one or two things, please, it's time to put everything you have learned into action. It's, it's no longer business as usual. From everything we have heard from all our panelists, it's no longer business as usual. It is true, COVID-19 is not your fault, neither is it anybody's fault. Nobody prepared for it. But now that it has come, what are you going to do about it? And let's stop all this idea of, don't worry, it will soon pass, it will go back to normal. It's not going back to normal, like Mrs. Lawson has said. It's no, schooling will not go back to the way it was before, because some things have been tested. Parents who don't know anything about technology now know about technology. You'll be shocked that a lot of parents who don't even know how to use WhatsApp and other things, and now know how to use Zoom. It's because of the COVID-19. So a lot of things are changed. The kind of parents you're serving before are not the ones you're serving now anymore. Even the students you're serving before are no longer the same way they were before. So schooling is no longer business as usual. That is why creativity is the first key. And you have to leverage on technology. You cannot avoid it anymore. Our conventional schools have been avoiding technology for so long. Oh, uh, there's no need. There's no how to do it. Nobody has money to buy devices. Now you have devices of 20,000, 15,000, even 10,000 that can do all these things. So it's no longer business as usual. You have to do things differently right now. You can no longer run away from it. It is here at your doorstep. It's either you do it or you don't survive. So you're not doing, doing it to increase today. You're doing it to survive, actually. So it's something that has to be done. You have to embrace technology and you can no longer avoid it. So thank you very much all for joining. Remember, send your questions to contact us at edfinmfb.com. We'll answer all your questions. Contact us at edwinmfb.com. And the video of this program is going to be on YouTube. The link will be on our website, www.edfinmfb.com. And all our social media handles at edfinmfb.com. Please, you can uh, uh, join us, like us on our social media. We are on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere at edfinmfv.com and all the information of the panelists too will be there so that you can know how you can contact each and every one of the panelists in case you need their service and in case you need to hear from them or you have questions for them also. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry we actually uh, took more than the time we expected to take, but it's all for our own good. So please at edfinmfv.com send your questions, send your remark, your everything you need to send to us, send it to us. Contact us at edfinmfv.com and, of course, our website. And remember what our MD said, there are a lot of resources on our website. A lot, some of them are even free. So please go to the website and you can see all the free resources that you can use. Remember, it is no longer business as usual. You have to embrace technology because you need to survive. It is now our lifeblood. Schooling is no longer business as usual. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, all our panelists from Wowbee. Wowbee, they produce great technology tools for schools. And of course, we know SEED already. They teach schools on how you can, um, uh, uh, as a local school, how you can manage your income and how you can get more income and how you can actually engage the student, even if you're a low income school, even with your 5,000 school fees, you can still do something in the school. These are great things we need to learn how to do, especially this period. So thank you very much, the panelists, for joining. And thank you very much, all our attendees. Remember, we are still going to have another webinar to teach you how you can start this uh, uh, remote learning. And of course, the device. We need you to know how the devices work. It's just 25800 but we are willing to spread it for nine months for anyone that is willing to buy it outrightly if they want to or if they want to take a loan to get it, everything is available for all that. So thank you very much. Um, it's good to have you all here. Remember, we'll answer all your questions on our email address. Okay, this is me saying bye-bye. Thank you very much for joining. Edfin is always available and yeah. here to help out for your education needs. Thank you very much. All right, bye-bye. Good to see you. Bye-bye, so, everyone. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you for